Hello and welcome to this exercise on circles, prism, sectors, area, volume, and so on. Uh, this is the second video I've done on similar uh, topics, and I hope you watched the uh, first video. Right, uh, this is an exam of an exam question, an IGC exam question. The figures in brackets are the marks our data is section. Now, because there's quite a lot to do here, I'm going to take this uh, as before. I'm going to do this in little uh, sections. That one first, now followed by that, and then lastly, that one there. Right, now, here's the question here. We're supposed to find the area of this sector here, and the also the arc length. The arc length is this. Now, note, we're not asked to find the perimeter. If we were asked to find the perimeter, that would have been this arc length plus this radius plus that radius. But for now, we just find the arc length is this one here. Now, the area of the sector is very much dependent on the angle subtended at the center uh, by the arc. In this case, the angle is 20 degrees. Okay. So now, the area of the sector is the angle uh, divided by 360 times the area of the whole circle by r squared. So we now end up with uh, 20 over 360 times pi times 6 squared, 6 being the radius of the circle of the, of the sector here. And after calculation or computation, we end up with 6.28 6 centimeters squared. Now, to an appropriate degree of accuracy, I've changed this to one decimal place because we've got six here and we've got six centimeters here and not six point something. Okay, so that so that we were not asked to give an answer to uh, an appropriate degree of accuracy, but just in case. Now moving on from there, uh, we now find the the arc length, which is this one here. And, and as before, as for the area, the arc length is dependent on the angle subtended at the center by the arc. So if we then do 20 divided by 360 times 2pi, now 2pi r is the formula for finding the circumference of the whole circle, okay? And then our answer, our answer is uh, 2 over 3pi, if you want to be very accurate. Otherwise, it is 2.09 or 2 centimeters, it's the same degree of accuracy. Right, now moving on, uh, the next section, now here we're supposed to find the volume of this prism here because it is a prism, okay? And also to find the total surface area and note here that the word total is highlighted, okay? Right, now to find the volume, uh, having found the area of the sector, we don't have to multiply this by the length. So. Or the, or the depth. So the answer should be that 1.4 centimeter cubed because we're looking at volume. Next, the total surface area. Now, we have to be very careful here because we're looking for that area there and a similar area underneath. Okay? And then we're looking for this, the area of this rectangle here. Okay? And then there's also one behind there. And of course, look, look out for the, the surface area of this curved uh, surface here. Now, don't forget that the area of um, a curved surface is the, uh, the circumference or the arc length, or in this case, uh, times the depth. So now we've got, uh, for the rectangles, we've got 60 centimeters squared. And for the uh, curved surface, we've got two, 5 times 2.09, and that's 10.45. When you add all three, uh, we get uh, 83.01 centimeters squared, or 83, uh, working to one, uh, the nearest whole number. And that should be the answer for this section. Now, this one here requires a bit of thought, I'm sure they all do anyway. And we ask to choose from uh, these four, you got multiple choice here. Uh, choose four from this four, which is right. 
and it says which one of the following statements a b c or d is true and to do this what i've done is to uh, write down the formula for volume and the formula for volume is v is equal to pi r squared h so if we then divide both sides by uh, by h we end on that r squared is equal to v which is the volume here divided by pi h and if we add it, if we take the square root of both sides we end up at r because the square root of r squared is r is equal to the square root of v divided by uh, pi h that's what you got there right now if you look if you go back here for instance uh, we're looking at all this uh, what it, with the choices available to us and I think this is the right one because it says h is inversely proportional to r squared as we got there. So h is inversely proportional to r squared there. So when h goes up, sorry, when r goes up, h comes down. So inversely proportional. Okay? Uh, where v and pi, v over pi is constant, that you know, the, the constants of proportionality. Right. And then the next question. Uh, what happens to the height h at the cylindrical cheese when the volume remains constant, but the radius is doubled? Now, what I, you can have a guess at what the answer is supposed to be, but what I've done here is I've got to equation v uh, is equal to pi r squared h1 when the radius is r. Now, when the radius is doubled, we now have v is equal to pi into 2r all squared because the radius is double there. But the volume is the same. So now what will uh, equate both, um, make uh, these two equal to each other because V is constant, V, v is the same. So we have, uh, and now when you square that, uh, two squared is four. So I've got my four up there. So I've got pi four R squared H2, where H2 is the new height, okay? As a result of doubling R, radius h2 is a new height this one here so 4 pi r squared h2 is equal to pi r squared h1 uh, which then gives us if we divide both sides by 4 pi r squared uh, the pi r squares cancel up which then means that h2 the new height is now a quarter of the old height and that should be the answer and i hope all that makes sense Please subscribe and thank you for watching and I'll see you again sometime. Bye bye now.